Hey, here we are going to new computer animation tutorial and what we're going to be doing is animating a jack-in-the-box jumping out of this box here. This is the second part of an animated e-card tutorial that I started here um, in Adobe Animate. And so we did a text mask unveiling, just wanted to tell you or just wanted to say, and then kind of use the camera feature to zoom in on a box and use shape tween to have it open up. And so you could really finish off this animation and make it any kind of card that you want, but we are going to go with the April Fool's theme here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my oval tool to start by, I'm gonna actually, first before I do that, I need to make a layer for my Jack in the Jack in the Box. Um, so I'm gonna create this layer here. I'm gonna call it Jacko. Take my oval tool, as I said before. Uh, I'm gonna choose to go with a black outline and then a color kind of like a yellowish emoji type color. Um, stroke outline for four should be good. If I hold shift, click and drag, I'll get a good circle. Um, now what I'm gonna do, and good, just checking that it was on that layer. I'm gonna draw the eyes. For the eyes, I'm gonna give no outline. Actually here, gotta go back here. I had that circle still selected. So I want no outline for my eyes and they're going to be white. So again, with my ellipse tool here, I'm going to just click and drag. I'm not going to hold shift this time because I'll make my eyes kind of like funny sizes and positions. I'm going to make one a little bigger than the other. Now I'm going to go with black and just kind of, again, kind of paste these in here, a little cross-eyed, a little one bigger than the other kind of thing going on. And uh, now I'm going to take my pencil and kind of draw this guy's little silly face here. So I'm gonna start by, oops, I'm gonna to need to get my pencil color as black and make sure it's on smooth mode, not straight. And I'm just gonna kind of draw this mouth here. I'm gonna do his tongue kind of hanging out there. And then the other side of his mouth there too. Now I can always zoom in and kind of tweak and fix up his mouth a little bit. Take your arrow tool, click and drag to kind of close that. Maybe drag this lines here so that it's a little better connected and a little more at a curve. There we go. That's looking a little better. And so once I get this to a point where I'm happy with it, I'm gonna use my fill bucket and try and fill in these shapes. Remember, if something's not filling, you wanna choose the close large gaps option here um, from your paint bucket options. I'm gonna change my color now to a red and fill in the tongue. And there we go. So now I pretty much got my Jacko ready. I mean, you could add anything you want to your own. If you wanna add a hat or any other kind of different expression, you know, feel free to be creative as always with your own work. So now I'm gonna convert this to a graphic. I'm gonna hit F8 on my keyboard, or we can right click and go down to convert to symbol. I'm gonna call this guy Jacko and say okay. Um, now that I have him made, I'm gonna double click on him and go inside to the Jacko graphic and create a new layer. This layer two, I'm gonna call the spring and that's gonna be his spring. Layer one is his face, so I'll just call that face. Um, and the spring layer is gonna go down underneath him and I'm gonna take my pencil tool and a darker color gray and I'm gonna draw a little spring underneath here and then what we're gonna use is a shape tween to kind of make the spring do a little bounce action. Okay, um, so there's that. And now what we're gonna do is add in a couple of keyframes here. So at the fifth frame, we're going to hit F6 and create a new keyframe here. So F6 creates a new keyframe at the fifth, then go to the 10th and again, a new keyframe there. Now we'll go to the spring layer, again, doing the same thing, F6 and F6 again to create new keyframes there. Now all I really want to do is kind of move and rotate his face just a little bit on this middle frame here. So I'm just going to rotate a little bit and maybe move him over and down. Um, and then I'm going to take the spring and I'm going to squish that just a little bit here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is try and create a shape tween for our spring. You might notice your shape tween do something funny. Shape tweens, as we all know at this point, can do some funny things. I'm gonna 
go ahead and back up here and try this one more time. Sometimes with uh, the shape that you've drawn, it depends on how much you changed it and that could have influenced what happens with the shape tween. Now it shrinks, but it's also adding in some other odd lines. So sometimes it's just kind of a, um, a process where you kind of have to just see what you can get as you keep kind of tweaking your shapes a little bit more. And so, you know, I may just have to settle for this uh, tutorial sake on what I get out of my shape tweens with my springs there. And then we're going to add in uh, classic tweens for the movement of the face so that that's kind of moving back and forth and the spring is squishing down in. Right, so that's kind of getting the movement now for our Jack in the Box. Um, so if I go ahead and play this, well, actually I won't play it yet, but um, our Jack should be on the bottom layer of our whole project right now. Um, we're gonna reorganize the layers just a little bit, I think, um, because right now he is, um, well, first, let's get him, let's figure out where he's actually going to come out in our timeline. So we do want him underneath the front, and but we want him over the top of the inside of the box. So the inside of the box is actually a part that needs to come down. Top of the box can be at the top, that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we need to make him small enough to fit behind um, the front of the box here. And I'm going to go down to, I want to say, yeah, to where this box opens, where it starts to open. Actually, what we'll do is the first frame, um, I'm just going to slide this a little bit bigger so I can see all my layers there. Um, I'm going to actually just take him and hold shift and click and drag to make him a little bit smaller so that he'll fit behind this box now. I want to make sure that he fits entirely behind the front because I don't want him to peek out of the top of the box. There we go. So I don't want him to peek out of the top of the box when it opens, but he's going to come out once that box is starting to open. So let's go down to here and see. So at the 120th keyframe, this is when that box top opens. Let's click on our Jack in the Box layer there. Um, so right here where that box is just about open is where we want to put a keyframe. That's on the Jack in the Box layer. That's where he's going to start to come out and we'll say maybe give him to about the 125th. So it's going to be pretty quick. Just this gap of five frames he's going to pop out. So this is where he's going to start growing and then here is where he's really kind of popped out. So I'm going to click and drag holding shift to create to make him larger. Oops, I thought I might grab that there. I'm just going to nudge him up with my keyboard to get him. See, so that was the other thing. We do need to take this top layer, our top layer, and move that underneath our jack-in-the-box as well because the top needs to be behind the jacko. And so now that's in the right order. So, um, okay, back to where we were at before. So. Here, he's now, he's big enough to come up so we can see him, and I'm just gonna move him upwards so that his head comes out, but it's not quite getting out of the edge there. Um, and what we're gonna use is just a simple classic tween to um, make him kind of pop out there. And so you'll see he kind of starts small and grows big. So that's something else you can do with classic tweens is make something grow from small to large. So let's just go ahead and give this a test play and see what we got. Just wanted to tell you, April Fool's Day. Right, so we got our emoji guy popping out, Jacko popping out of the box, bouncing around. Um, and the only other thing that we'll probably add is in a fun text, right? We had a cute text here. We'll add in a fun text, April Fool's Day, either on the front of the box or on the side area right next to him over here. So we'll just go over how to do that really quick. I'll take my text tool, um, click and drag. Oh, well, I'm going to want to put that on its own layer. So let's see. Maybe where I'll put that is I'll take I'll put it on the bow layer here. So I'm going to go to 
the same frame when he's out all the way, so 125th. I'm just going to hit F6 there for a new keyframe, and then I'll put the text right there on that frame. So I'm going to say April Fools exclamation point, and then put this in, again, some kind of a, a goofy font. See what I have here. I've got some old kind of graffiti fonts and stuff like that I've added in here. Let's see. Could be something simply bolder, just to kind of get that point across. A bold kind of thing. That works pretty good here. So again, kind of using one of these graffiti fonts that I had downloaded before. Um, let's change the color here, so make this a little bit brighter or easier to read, maybe like a blue color cool and um, yeah now I can maybe make that a little bit larger just to fill in the space here and there we go so that will pop up once he comes out all the way for the end of the animation so um, let's test play this one more time just wanted to tell you and then we use our camera feature to zoom in on the box April Fools and there we go. There you have it. Nice little e-card to send somebody for um, April Fool's Day. So hope you have some luck with this uh, project and have fun and be creative.